day. Thank you for tuning in to this general election candidate forum for Port of Olympia District 3. The forum is presented by the League of Women Voters of Thurston County and TCTV. The League is a nonprofit, nonpartisan political organization that encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in their government. The League registered new voters, studies issues, and advocates for its positions with the legislature. Despite our name, the legislature is open to both men and women of voting age. I'm Karen Tweet from the League, and I will be moderating this forum. The candidates for Port District 3 are Jerry Farmer and Dr. Elizabeth E.J. Zeta. For this forum, the candidates will have two minutes for an opening statement then I will ask them questions in alternating order. The person first asked the question will have two minutes to respond, followed by one minute from the other candidate. There will be one minute for closing statements at the end. We'll begin with opening statements from the candidates. The, the first candidate to do their opening statement will be Jerry Farmer. Thank you, Karen, and thank you to TCTV and the League of Women Voters. You know, the most important thing the Port of Olympia can do is create jobs in our community, living wage jobs. Fully employed families shop at local businesses, contribute to local charities, and have the money to use our recreational facilities and enjoy the natural beauty of our county. Prosperity is the key to a thriving community, and more jobs mean more people buying things, generating more sales tax, so our local government bodies have more budget to pay hardworking employees and teachers, who then can spend it all over again. It's a simple equation. It all comes back to jobs. The port is the biggest economic driver in our area and a nexus for sustainability and growth. Environmental stewardship and economic vitality don't have to be mutually exclusive terms. The port is in a unique position to advance that agenda, from creating a food storage facility and commercial kitchen complex for our South County farmers, to a state-of-the-art marine fuel dock to encourage more clean tourism spending throughout our area. I'm not new to this process. I've, for decades, I've volunteered in our community to improve our quality of life, helping charities raise money, and serving our transportation, tourism, and planning committees. I understand the challenges of financial responsibility, environmental cleanup, and supporting new businesses, and most of all, creating jobs. I prepared myself to be able to see the whole picture, to protect our environment and our quality of life, to help create jobs and get us working together. I'd like to work with you to create a shared vision for our port. I'd like your vote. I'm Jerry Farmer. I ask for your vote as port commissioner. Thank you, Jerry. Zita? Thank you for having us here today. I'm E.J. Zita and I'm running for Port of Olympia Commissioner in District 3 because business as usual is not working at the Port of Olympia, and I have a better way. Um, I've been working to improve Port of Olympia operations for 10 years with some success. I chair the Thurston County uh, Agriculture Committee, and my PhD is in physics. As founding president of the Salmon Creek Basin Neighborhood Association, we collaborated with the city of Tumwater to hold the Port of Olympia to higher standards in 2005. The Port of Olympia appointed me to their advisory committee for new market economic development, where I advocate for sustainable local development, good stewardship of public resources, open public planning processes, and better analyses before making costly decisions. The Port of Olympia can be a partner in Thurston County for a better future and better economic opportunities. I can help make these changes. We need a port for the people. Thank you for supporting Zeta for Port. Thank you, Zeta. The first question will come to you, Zeta, um, for two minutes, and then Jerry will respond with one minute. What is your position on a Deschutes River estuary and why? The Deschutes River is unhealthy and it can be restored to better health by um, planting and uh, addressing point source solution, point, point source pollution along the river. It also needs restored flow into West Bay. 
Capitol Lake is unhealthy. It's polluted and it's expensive to maintain. By letting the Deschutes River flow freely through the lake, um, both the river and the lake and the sound will be healthier. We'll have higher oxygen levels in the in South Sound and we do not need to have more dredging if we channel the flow appropriately. So I support restored flow of the river through the through the lake. We'll have a more beautiful and healthy lake. We'll have improved recreation opportunities and we'll have a healthier South Sound. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry? You know, this issue has torn our community in so many ways for so long now. And I really think there's a solution. The solution, however, is an expensive one. I think our community would get behind it. And it's what's known as, in some circles, the hybrid solution. It preserves Capitol Lake as a water feature and as a reflective pond for our Capitol Dome area and extends that Capitol, Capitol campus look that, that has been around for so long. And it allows the estuary to return to something like its original state. You know, the Deschutes River estuary is a very, very flat estuary. It doesn't have a lot of flow to begin with. If it's possible, if it's engineering possible to get this done, we could do this without taking out the Fifth Avenue Bridge, and we could restore that flow and still preserve our Capitol Lake reflective pond. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Jerry, the next question is, would you propose further development of the airport, New Market, and other South County property? If so, what? If not, why not? Well, as you may or may not know, uh, Karen, there, there's been a community visioning process going on for the last year or so. In fact, my opponent is involved in that process as well. And what I've seen taking place is a great coming together of community vision, community desires, uh, community wants, and, and, and community development. So the area south of the airport, the 550 acres, excuse me, east, west of the airport as well, the 550 acres that the port controls can be developed to be a lot of different things. One of the things I would like to see there actually is what I call a, and what's been called a, a green development zone. It's a, an opportunity to, to focus businesses that are, that are oriented around green solutions for both our economy and for our world. Uh, let's face it, global warming is an issue. It's a big issue. And the more people that we can uh, get to try and develop solutions to, to, to get us moving in the right direction to uh, counteract global warming, the better off we're going to be. I'd like to see the part, port take part in that process. And I'd like to see them do it by creating this green development zone and doing it in a way that could increase businesses and increase jobs in our area. Thank you. Thank you. Zita? So as Jerry mentioned, I am serving on the Port of Olympia's advisory committee for new market econo economic development near the airport. And it's important that we collaborate with the city of Tumwater, which has a vision for that area. This is located in the city of Tumwater. And there are hundreds of acres, some developed, some still in natural lands. There's a lot of land that is developed and underutilized just west of the airport. That should be our target zone for development, um, for mixed use development, sustainable economic development. Along the um, Tumwater Boulevard, that is the gateway into Tumwater, where we should have mixed use development. And there's 200 acres of urban forest, which prevents flooding or ameliorates flooding in the Salmon Creek Basin. And it's critical to preserve that valuable resource. Thank you. Thank you. So Zita, the next question comes to you first. What would you expect to be your major challenges as port commissioner over the next four years? I think one of the biggest things that needs to happen at the Port of Olympia is a change in the planning process. One of the things I've learned by serving on the Port of Olympia Advisory Committee is that when decisions are in the process of being made, there is sometimes a nominal public involvement 
but mostly decisions come from the top down. And we need to broaden our public process. We need to hear from the citizens, and we need to hear from our local experts. We also need to make um, our decisions with careful cost-benefit analyses. Right now, the port looks at the potential benefits, but not at the potential costs before they make decisions. And this leads them into risky decisions that often lose money. The port's losing four and a half million dollars of taxpayer money every year, and we can do better with a better planning process. Jerry? I would like to address the, uh, first of all, the four and a half million dollars worth of taxpayer money thing. Number one, the biggest challenge facing the port is going to be building revenues. But number two, the port is not wasting four and a half million dollars worth of taxpayers' money every year. The port, and the marine terminal in particular, shows all of its costs and all its revenues coming out net net. At the end of that process, and really I would like to put this issue to rest, it's been out there for a couple of years. At the end of that process, the port needs to take a depreciation allowance because the federal government requires that they do so, and they require it because the port gets grants from the federal government to assist in its operations. So while you could look at the budget in a cursory fashion and see that maybe there's this $4 million there, it's not taxpayer money. Taxpayer monies are being used to clean up the sound and service general obligation bond debt at this point. None of it is being used for port operations. We still need to get more revenue up there, and I think I can help with doing that because I'm a business person that understands revenue growth. Jerry, in a related question, do you support an increased port tax levy on citizens of Thurston County? Why or why not? As a matter of fact, I don't. I don't think that it's necessary for the port to do any more than it's doing already. They're servicing their general obligation bonds right now. They are cleaning up the sound. They're currently charging 18 and a half cents per thousand. Right now, your property tax obligation to the Port of Olympia is less than your property tax obligation to the Thurston, or excuse me, to the Timberland Library System. With that 18 and a half cents, they're doing a remarkable amount of good. They're actually empowered to draw 45 cents per thousand, and yet they don't. I would say in around 2017 or so, when one of some of those obligation bonds are taken care of, that that would be the time to go to the public and say, you know what, we're going to reduce the tax burden. We're going to take some of those taxes off because we don't need them anymore, and we're going to be able to move ahead with revenue and, and excuse me, move ahead with revenue choices that will bring more money to the South Sound and more economic opportunity to the South Sound. Thank you. Zita? The port should not increase property tax levy, and in fact, the port should be returning a dividend to the people. The Port of Olympia manages $300 million in public resources. On the open market, we should expect a return of $20 million a year for that $300 million in public resources. Um, Jerry's claimed that the port is making money, but this year the port did such poor business that it had to cancel $13.5 million in projects. Jerry's claimed that the port is cleaning up the sound. However, the public funds are being spent on dredging, not for environmental cleanup, but in order to bring big ships into the Port of Olympia. And that dredging has environmental costs. It stirs up dioxin-laden sediments and distributes them throughout the sound. Is this what we want our taxpayer money to be used for? If the port has to cancel $13 million in projects, we need to take a closer look at the kind of business decisions that are made. We need to invest in our local business people, in our local farmers. We can do better. Thank you. Thank you. Sita, would you be in favor of increased railroad traffic to the port? Yes, sound transit could be extended down into uh, Olympia. Uh, Thurston Regional Planning C Council is responsible for managing projects like that, and their perspective is that we need higher urban density and higher demand to bring sound transit into Olympia, but the port can be a partner in planning for this future. This would reduce pressure on highway travel. Right now, we get stuck in traffic jams near Fort Lewis, in Seattle, DuPont, 
and the port can be a partner in improving transit opportunities. Right now, the rail at the port is used primarily for carrying fracking sands that are imported from China out to the Bakken oil fields in North Dakota, or that's what they would like to use it for. Those fracking sands have not been moving all summer long. The port warehouse has a big pile of fracking sands that nobody wants to buy because fracking is down and those Chinese fracking sands are more expensive than natural fracking sands from Michigan. So investing in fracking sands, which come by boat and would be moved out by rail, um, was a bad investment and it's losing money for the port. Nobody wants to buy the fracking sands. They're not being moved by rail, and our rail line is unused right now. It could be used for something better. Thank you. Jerry? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think rail would be great, and anything the port can do to advance that process is good. They put in a rail loop out at the port itself so they can move all sorts of cargo, not just cargo, to the fracking uh, areas of, of, of the Bakken uh, uh, area, excuse me. I would like to uh, go back for just a moment and uh, the port, yeah, I've said before that the port is a great nexus for both environmental sustainability and economic development and to me the marine terminal is a perfect example of that. By dredging the deep water port we dredge up dioxins. We don't leave them down there to accumulate and, and haunt later generations. Those dioxins are dredged up and taken away and environmentally mitigated. A perfect example how we can bring both sustainability and environmental stewardship and economic growth to our area. Lastly, in terms of the budget for this last year, a stronger dollar and a weaker market because of that has led to some uh, issues with the port, but there is no way that anybody could have predicted where it is or where it could have come, and they're doing their best to manage that right now by doing exactly what Zita described, putting off capital development so that they can maintain a uh, good budget situation. Thank you. Now we come to our final question. Jerry, that, <laughs> that goes to you. Um, should the port be responsible for repair of road damage in Olympia caused by logging trucks? Yes. In fact, uh, I don't know if you know this or not, Karen, but, but when uh, the whole warehouse or logging thing uh, came up a few years ago and it was decided to move ahead with having warehouse or ship logs through the Port of Olympia, Plum Street was reinforced in such a way to, to take care of the problems associated with logging trucks going down those roads. And it's an interesting thing to note because a lot of people complain about the logging trucks. When I've been out doorbelling and talking to people, one of the first things that people say to me is, can you stop those logging trucks from going down the, the, the roundabouts, the two roundabouts up in that area there? And, and upon further examination, turns out that those logging trucks are not going to the port. Those logging trucks are going to the West Bay facility there, which is not port owned. They're going to other processing in our area. The port and warehouser uh, logs are going on Plum Street and they're doing the best they can to make sure that, that traffic is not being impacted by that. Interestingly, I uh, made contact with the city of Olympia to determine how many vehicles actually go by on Plum Street every day. And there's 15,000 vehicles that go by Monday through Friday during work hours uh, on that street. Of those 15,000, about 125 of them are logging trucks. So really less than 10, less, excuse me, less than 1% of the vehicles on that road are logging trucks. And I know they're annoying. I mean, it's like on my radio station, when, when we play a song that people don't like, they tell me that they hear it all the time. But that's just because they have that bias associated with the negativity. The truth is, there's not that many logging trucks going by there. And when they do go by, the port is doing their best to make sure that warehouse are toes to the line and, and uh, mitigates the impact of those trucks going through. Sita? Yes, I agree that the port should be responsible for repairing infrastructure damage due to the log trucks. And this happens not only on the streets of Olympia, but also on the marine terminal. The marine terminal needs repaving every couple of years because of damage due to log trucks. The log trucks also <clears throat> have diesel exhaust, which has public health impacts, especially for children and old people. Diesel exhaust 
is a carcinogen. And so the public health and safety impacts are something that the port needs to take responsibility for in, ad in addition to the infrastructure costs. Shipping logs has other impacts. The log dust and log bark that fall into the water required an $11.5 million stormwater treatment plant that the port had to build at the marine terminal that has a 10,000 gallon tank of 50% of hydrogen peroxide that leaked this summer and caused injuries. We need to take a closer look of all the impacts of projects like log shipping. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's now time for closing statements. Um, Zita, you have one minute for a closing statement. <clears throat> so I am running for the Port of Olympia because business as usual at the port is not working and I can help the port do better. I've been holding the port to higher standards ever since 2005. I worked with my neighborhood and with the city of Tumwater and the port appointed me to their public um, advisory committee for the new market economic development where I'm advocating for sustainable local development, <clears throat> good stewardship, of public resources, open public planning processes, and better analyses before making expenses, expensive decisions. The port can better fulfill its mission of creating oppor uh, economic opportunities throughout Thurston County by supporting sustainable local development, renewable energy at the marine terminal and the airport, supporting local farmers and food systems, um, developing recreation at the marine terminal and near the airport, and supporting transit. The port can be a partner in Thurston County for a better future, and I can help make these changes. We need a port for the people. Thank you for your support for Zeta for Port. Jerry? Thank you, Karen. You know, in a survey recently conducted by Elway Research, they concluded that 80% of the people in our county think that the port's doing a pretty good job. I would like to help the port do an even better job. I think it's a great thing for our county. The most important thing they can do is create jobs in our community, living wage jobs, because as I said before, those folks that get those wages contribute to local charities, can afford to buy homes, can, can drive businesses to success. And the port is the biggest economic driver in our area. Nearly 7,200 jobs trace back to port commission decisions from international trade to clean tourism jobs. The Olympia Farmers Market, the Hands On Children's Museum, the Swantown Marina are all realities today thanks to the port. As a small business owner that volunteers in our community in all kinds of sectors, from transportation to tourism to planning committees, I'm in, committed to improving our quality of life. I'll advocate for financial responsibility, environmental cleanup, supporting new businesses, and most of all, creating jobs. I'm Jerry Farmer. I ask for your vote for Port Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Zita. This brings us to the end of our forum. Um, we appreciate you being here. Thank you to TCTV and the League of Women Voters for making this forum possible. Viewers, we hope that when you vote in the November 3rd general election, this information will help you make an informed decision about your candidates. Thank you and good day. <laughs>